Although it's a very cold, frosty morning uh, on the west coast of Scotland, I am on the Athelcross Peninsula today. I am doing something I, I've, I don't think I've ever done before actually. It's starting a walk up high. Actually starting from the highest possible point you can get to in your car, which is the Bayalik Nabar. Big road that stretches along this, you probably can't see it, but it goes on top of the snow there. Uh, and that road is at a height of uh, around 2,000 feet, just over 2,000 feet. And the hills that I'm doing today are below 3,000 feet, so as you can probably work out, I'm saving myself a lot of ascent. Don't get me wrong, I like a good haul up from sea level as much as the next person, but we're a week away from the shortest day of the year. Light is at premium. It'll start getting dim quite early in the afternoon and the weather is forecast to deteriorate around 2-3 o'clock. Uh, these changes are never perfectly forecastable. It could arrive earlier or it could arrive later. But I'd sooner leave anything to chance. So I'm heading up right from the pass. It's not the most beautiful of starts, it has to be said. Although handy as this track is, it's the it's a track that allows maintenance vehicles to come up to the uh, antenna up there. But I'm sure we'll be leaving that behind and heading out that way. I thought I'd just come up here because it's a bit more sheltered so that I can show you the rather superb view of the Isle of Skye. Just catching the sunlight as the sun's coming up. It's still quite faint, it's a bit hazy. All this murk is supposed to lift just a little bit, but you can see the cooling, the black cooling over there, the red cooling a bit closer in the foreground. It's very, very nice. I was up here yesterday actually, came up just at the, the mast, and there was a lot more snow than there is now. And it has snowed overnight, but uh, the wind picked up overnight and everything's been scoured, so where there was actually quite nice deep snow. It's all a bit scared, uh, and right now very icy, so I've got my crampons, but I don't think they're going to do me much good because the ice is not very thick, and I'll probably be tripping over rocks the whole time, so it's one of those awkward walks where it's early season conditions, even though we're well into December now. Anyway, that's where I'm going, heading over there along this ridge, and um, going up to the top of a hill, which is the highest one on this group of hills called Ben Van, which is up there. It's funny, not so long ago, maybe a few years ago, I'd have been really quite snotty about starting a walk up high. I used to be weirdly purist about it, I used to be really anal about it, thinking no, that was cheating in some demented way. Of course it isn't. Or maybe it's just because my, I'm getting older and my knees are starting to go. Wow, that's quite some corners. As I say, that wasn't really there yesterday, at least not to that extent because the wind's been coming from that direction, it's been coming like that, this way, and just the snow collects coming this way. And then of course it's very dangerous walking up underneath these in certain conditions because these cornices can collapse, start avalanches. Wow, beautiful, beautiful morning. The other benefit of course of using the car and getting up here early is I get to see this, get to see the early morning light, the early morning winter light up high. I was saying in one of the last video blogs I did actually, the Loman Hills one, but that's the best thing of, about being up high in winter camping, is uh, the quality of light you get early in the morning and late in the evening, late in the afternoon. Essentially all of this here, all of this, is one big, enormous, bulky mass of Torridonian sandstone that's been gouged out in various places and there's innumerable corries, punctuated with corries everywhere, really really complex collection of stupendous steep corries and uh, passes and it's always worth clinging to the edge so that you can actually see these amazing cliffs. It's all very well sort of finding the easiest angle and sort of just keeping to the higher ridge line but it often means you don't see into places like this. So uh, as you're not teetering on the edge of cornices or something, it's usually a nice way to, to walk the hills by sticking to corrie edges.
it's possibly rocky. It's, <laughs> it's uh, really rugged. A lot more rugged than uh, its counterparts, like Liga, Ben Allegan, and parts of Ben A, really. But here, because it's almost like a plateau, it's strewn with boulders, and it's quite a bit of a challenge to pick your way through. Oh, get a nice frozen lochen. Oh, look at this. First light catching that side. The sun is indeed coming out. Quite, quite stupendous. It's actually getting quite warm. I'm gonna have to uh, get rid of that. We're about to get the sun. Well, that's where I'm headed, all the way out there. This is just a, a high pass. There's no need to go over this thing, so I just need to make a line across here so I'm not gaining or losing too much weight. But it's taken quite a long time. It's, um, these are big hills, quite deceptive. And uh, the, the rocks are making it actually quite difficult. Uh, there are big boulders in the heather the snow sits on top of the heather and hides some of the chasms in between big rocks and boulders and you end up disappearing sometimes. It hasn't quite been cold enough at altitude to freeze all the bogs that are underneath all the snow as well, so it can be quite a, a rude shock sometimes when you sink into what you think is snow and suddenly your, your foot goes really cold and you find you've got a boot full of sphagnum moss and gunk. It'd be quite uncomfortable. It's got the lovely footprints of hairs here, 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 here. If anyone's seen with Nell and I. Uh, always in the fours, these sort of two at the front here and two at the back. But these two here are the front paws, and those are the back paws. They're the bigger ones. The big ones are the back paws. So it puts its back feet in there as it's trotting along, running, and then it's, it reaches forward with its front feet. They land like that, and its back feet catch up and land there. And it just goes on like that, really. That's why you always see these groups of four, and you always tend to think, and you see things like that, that maybe that's the front legs and those are the back legs. But it's not, it's the other way around. It's just that when it runs, it pulls its back legs so far forward, they go in front of its front paws. If anyone's ever seen a hare running through the snow, which their feet are like snowshoes in winter, and uh, very, very useful. It's incredible how fast they go over uh, even quite soft snow. Just making my way through this boulder jumble on the slow climb up, final approach to Ben Van. If you're still a way off, it's still quite high up. It's actually, all of this is it. It's a big, long hill, its tail of which stretches all the way down to that glen, which if you go just around the corner, you're just a few kilometers from Applecross. That's where it comes out. It's a big, empty wilderness, this peninsula. It's traditionally, historically, been quite isolated because the hill road was only 
built in the early 19th century. And until that point, most of the settlements that sprung up around the coast were, were there because you could get there by boat. So, like many places actually, in Scotland and up in Scandinavia as well, that's how settlements spread along the coast. It was by boat, not by car, not by road, not by horse or anything like that. It was by boat. That's how you got about. But modernity comes whether you like it or not, for good or for bad, usually both, and the road along the coast, which is some, oh, I don't know, I think it's do a full loop, it's something like almost 50 miles. That was opened in 19... In the mid-1970s, I think, and provide an alternative for when the road gets closed, which the road runs along this line of hills here. So now you do have a, at least have an option. It's a big diversion, but you can at least get around the coast if you need to, if the road's closed. But in spite of the options you've got for getting to Applecross these days, uh, it still has that sense of being a really far-flung place. It takes a bit of an effort to get to, and can't ever really see it losing that, uh, that air of remoteness, because it is remote. It's a wonderful inn down there as well, of course. The Apple Cross Inn, which we paid a visit to yesterday. Some fish and chips, a fish pie, and the best sticky toffee pudding I've had in a very long time. Despite the sun having come out, which is wonderful, and to get a bit of blue sky, it's all a bit milky and hazy. And a week off shortest day, the sun never gets that high. It's barely, barely up above the, uh, the outline of the hill. So it's not like it's dazzling sunshine by any means. The weather is deteriorating from out that direction, which is why it looks a bit more gloomy out there. There's a lot of rain coming. Easier walking for a change. The boulders have gone off. These have been replaced by low slabs. Still sinking a little bit though. Ooh. Well, for the last half hour or so, I've just been steadily heading upwards, very gently, with no, ah, oh, I was about to say, with no hint of the summit. to get a view down into quite stupendous quarries that are down there but uh, as you can see there's a lot of cornices all along the length of here and I don't want to get too close this is about as close as I can get really safely to showing you what's down there there is that's the most stupendous. Corey. Oh, what a shame. <laughs> well, here we are at the other end of Ben Van. Uh, the summit was up there somewhere. And uh, we were trying to get a look at the quarries that are over here, but I've since come all the way around. It's a massive wall here, it's just incredible. Uh, can't get any closer than here, that's really slippy down there. It's a shame because there's two really, really striking lochans down there nestled right in the quarry that would have been quite good if I could have got a glimpse of, but next time, some other time. There's wonderful, wonderful uh, frozen waterfalls. Point them out to you. There 
there we go. Quite big too, all the way up this face. They're actually, the terraces here, the sort of the terraces and these corridors, it's a very important area scientifically, the corridors along the length of Ben Van. I, th I think it's a triple SI, a site of special scientific interest. Might be uh, an, an SAC as well, I think, and it's special, is it a special area of conservation because of its uh, plant communities that it has. It has, because it's so steep, these ledges are so steep, there's things growing, there's fern communities and things growing on these ledges over here that uh, are quite quite special because it hasn't altered much since the first vegetation colonised these cliffs after the ice retreated. Most places in the country have either been farmed or managed or grazed, but grazers like sheep and deer haven't been able to get onto these ledges. And it's the same on many of the corridors along this length. So it's a very, very important place scientifically. And there's dwarf juniper communities as well here, which is quite a southerly location for it. So it's a very special place indeed. I'm having to, <laughs> have to practically lie on the ground so that they're not in the wind. Um, yeah. And you can see how stupendous it is and what amazing walking there is. And uh, the mountain architecture is um, among the finest you'll find anywhere in, in the land. But not many people come here. There's people in the know who come scrambling on these on these uh, these ridges. Very good for scrambling, apparently. Um, climbing as well. Um, and you know, people do come walking here, but in the main, it's not a mecca for walking in the same way that those hills over there are in Torridon, because um, even though this is Torridon sandstone as well, and it has the same general appearance, but there's no Munros here, so that tends to make places quieter. They're not. They're not the honeypots that you'd find elsewhere. Not that the hills, the Munros up here ever get that busy, it has to be said, because they're so far from population centres up here that even you know, even not even at weekends on beautiful days it can be quite quiet in winter. So uh, they're quiet anyway, but even more quiet. This whole mass massive is very, very quiet. And you can spend a whole lifetime exploring the corries, the stalkers' paths. And the different ways of walking in and out of this amazing, amazing wilderness. Wonderful place, worth exploring. I'll definitely be back. Now I think I need to get back to the summit, have my tea and cake. That's up there, it's the only place where there's any shelter at all, so I'll get back up there, have a tea and cake, and then head home. Quite a lovely day. It's cold up here, it must be about minus one, minus two or something like that. But it's not too windy at the moment, so it's not too cold, although take your gloves off for any length of time and your hands are starting to sting with the cold. Well that's my boots retightened, my gate is refastened, they were frozen solid, so that was a bit difficult to do. And I think I'm ready to go back. Uh, Wonderful, wonderful hill. I mean, hardly a pushover, even given the, the really high start that I had at 2,000 feet. That was really quite difficult because of the boulders, slabs of rock covered in ice. Normally you could just trot along them quite nicely because the sandstone's really grippy, but they're occasionally icy, so you had to be careful. And uh, quite uh, deep snow at times, so it's actually been quite tough going. It's now half past 12, so it's been about three hours here. Granted, I've been faffing a bit with the camera, but it's been a few hours to get here. Now I've got to go all the way back over there. Um, like I say, I'm not really a fan of heading back the same way that I've come, but uh, I thought there was somebody creeping up behind me there, but it's unavoidable and I don't really mind too much and I've got a few hours to kill and the weather looks like it's going to hold off for a little bit. Um, it is one of those days when you, you try to get um, the best of what is on offer. It's one of these weather windows that you're never really sure will present itself. When I came here at the start of the week, down in uh, down by Kishore, uh, the forecast for the whole week looked awful. It was just rain, snow, sleet, hail, gales, blizzards, ice, lightning, thunder, all those kinds of things. And it looked like there'd be no chance at all to get up high. So I'm quite amazed that this has even come about. Granted, it's only for maybe five or six hours in between fronts or in between storm systems, but that's what you have to do when you come, to, in, especially in winter, you have to get out and make the best of the time you get and grab these weather windows. Because out there, that murk, looks like that's the next lot of weather coming in, so I should, I should really head off. 
back the way I came. <laughs> 